Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Bruce Bissett here, avionicseducation.com. I want to talk to you about a little bit of the live feed that's coming up next Thursday at uh, 7 p.m. Central Time on September 15th, and also a little bit about troubleshooting or the fact that what I do most these days is put out fires. Had an interesting call on my Labor Day weekend. A friend of mine said he was flying in a 421 uh, with the owner of the aircraft. Had problems with the magneto on the right-hand engine. So what do you do to troubleshoot a magneto? Magneto is a little generator. Uh, this is uh, no small engine. It's an IO540. So having nothing better to do than prepping for classes that are coming up. So I decided to go ahead, pull my toolbox out, grab the buzz box, and go run out to the airport and take a look at the magnetos. Basic troubleshooting items whenever you're working on a magneto system is you get a lot of information from the aircraft owners. What was the airplane doing? Well, they would do a normal run-up. He told me that they had no problems with the initial run-up. RPMs were dropped, were fine. But on occasion, they would fly around for a few minutes and they would start misfiring. During the misfire, in other words, the engine would like seize or, or it would not seize, excuse me. It would actually jump or, you know, the RPM would bounce a little bit, which means that you've got the airplane firing when it's not supposed to fire. So he told me he shut off the magneto. Everything was running smoothly. The airplane will run fine on one magneto. Landed and gave me a call. Before we get too far, we need to explain what exactly we are looking at. On this aircraft, the problem is with the left-hand magneto. The pilot reports that after a few moments of flying, the left-hand magneto began misfiring, which means that the spark was going where it not supposed to go or when it wasn't supposed to happen. Where it's not supposed to go would be could be with the distributor. If we have shorts or cracks in the distributor system, the sparks could be jumping to other locations, getting to other spark plugs. If it has to do with timing issues, then we're going to be looking at our main contact assembly, which is actually across the T1 transformer. But another thing that determines when magnetos fire is the timing between C2, which is the condenser, which is off the switch circuit, and the transformer. In other words, when the contactor opens, then C2 is allowed to discharge, which then creates a large voltage across the transformer, which steps up the voltage, which sends it hopefully to the right time at the right spark plug as it rotates around. Now, this particular magneto is a left-hand magneto, which means it's going to rotate counterclockwise, and it has a retard contact assembly. The retard contact assembly then is also something that only runs when the start switch is in the start position. Because what happens is that when the switch is in the start position, then the fourth contactor in row here actually will make connection through the start switch, through the starter solenoid, which will not only apply voltage to, of course, the aircraft starter, but also will provide voltage to the starting vibrator. Now, we don't think this was a problem in this case because this was happening during flight. But we'll go through and take a look at the retard contacts at the same time while we have it open to look at it. First thing I'm going to do as a mechanic is I'm going to go through and just simply, first thing, check the timing. Open up the cowls. Pretty tight cowl on a, on a uh, Cessna 421. Also, there's an intercooler on top that has to be removed to get to the two magnetos on the other on the other end. <clears throat> this is a Bendex magneto, which means it's connected to the P leads, which are shielded to ground. And you have uh, it says obviously a six-cylinder uh, engine with 12 spark plugs on it. Pull the top spark plugs off so I could get compressions on the number one cylinder. Pull it up on the number one cylinder, and just simply hook up the timing. I rotated the engine through as compression came up on the number one just before it's about a 30 degree uh, pre-fire on that thing, the mags would open. Because that's the way magnetos work, is that when the points inside them open, that's what collapses the field. The right hand magneto, I got a timing light came in at the right time when it came around on compression. But on the left hand, I had nothing. There was no light whatsoever. So I go and this time go ahead and pull the magneto off 
after thoroughly looking at the P lead, make sure the P lead wasn't grounded because this also would prevent the uh, uh, the points from at least at least the coil from collapsing because that's what the P lead does. P lead shorts the magnetos to ground to prevent the magnetic field from forming, which causes the points to open. The field collapses. Big spark spark plug at the right time. At least that's what you hope. In the process, I found out that I could not get the nut off the P lead line because this particular model is actually attached to a capacitor. So the capacitor, actually, if you're familiar, it's actually a term condenser. The condenser line was tight. I mean, we're talking really tight. In fact, I was so worried about rotating it too much. The last thing I want to do is loosen it up that I actually unscrewed the condenser from the housing and pulled it open. I could see that it's been uh, mangled with uh, pliers. You can see it's been dented. These condensers are very soft. However, they're not supposed to be torqued anything above 12 inch pounds. I'm also finding out from a technician over at, um, at a place over in Montana, he told me it also should not have lock washers on it to lock it down. Well, this thing was so locked on that it broke the, the blue number 10 lead on it, which I'll have to replace when I get the magneto back. So I go and pull the magneto, put it on the bench. Now I run it with my hand, so left hand turning magneto. So I run it in my hand and I'm getting shorted as I'm rotating it, getting shorted through the center lead. I mean, it's just firing at random. Uh, go through and look at the points. The points are opening and closing at the right time. The the the, the internal the e timing seemed a little bit off in the fact that it was timed right on the gap. You could kind of feel it when you rotate a uh, magneto around. Inside the magneto will be some red lines on a couple teeth. That is that is supposed to be when the points open. It's, we talk about internal timing versus external timing. And those were about right, except for the fact that I would rotate it halfway through and I'd get more points that open and close. So what I'm going to do very carefully is when the part comes back, um, because I couldn't take the condenser off because I didn't want to jam it or destroy it in any way, I had to try to do the test through the condenser. It still wouldn't function. Turns out, talking to the Bendix King, uh, the, pen, the Bendix Magneto person I talked to, yeah, that was it. That's your problem. If you over torque the condenser in this particular unit, you will break the capacitor, which will then eliminate the path that it needs to provide its impedance to ground. In other words, it will not, um, it will not function. It won't time rightly, which means you get the uh, misfires. So we're going to go and order a new condenser, $135. Uh, hopefully our supply chain problem doesn't get into our, get in the way. And I'll do another video, or at least I'll talk about it next week when it comes in, how it went. So talking about next week, that's a troubleshooting issue. I do a lot of troubleshooting these days. I do a lot of uh, fixing problems on aircraft that were normally caused by, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit humans. Great example of that is that this particular magneto was only five flights ago. I didn't mean, only hours, maybe a few hours on the aircraft. So it was recently overhauled. So we're going to talk about troubleshooting. So I'm going to go through and give you a chance next week to go ahead and get your YouTube Avionics Master Technician's badge. I'll have it be able to download for, for framing and put on your wall. So we're going to talk about troubleshooting a wire. I'm going to pick on a Boeing 737 because that's the airplane I know the most of. Um, I've worked on every variant or been associated with every variant of the 737 up through the MAX. I haven't, can't say I actually worked on the MAX, but I was assigned to Boeing with the MAX program here recently. So I really know this airplane very well. Those are the schematics and diagrams that we're going to be working with. What I would like you to do before you come into the video next week is go ahead and review the... Uh, reading or using a multimeter on my YouTube channel. I'll put the link down below so you can go ahead and look at that video talking about how we're going to go through and use a multimeter to troubleshoot a wire, basic uses of a multimeter. And then we'll come back. We'll go through a troubleshooting scenario using a little bit of uh, logic and learning about the uh, uh, wiring diagrams. We're learning about the wires themselves, how they're routed through the aircraft. And it's a little bit 
more high end than the simple basic electricity, but it is definitely going to be interesting. So come back at um, next week, Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to like and share the channel. Anybody else that might be along. I have almost 2,000 subscribers. My goal is for this channel is, if you may or may not, I actually have a cockpit to a 737. My goal is to build my channel enough and build up my work, my uh, my school up to where I could actually get this 737 cockpit put together and create it into the avionics trainer I want it to be, which means you'll be able to get into it. The circuit breaker panels will still be in it, and you'll be able to work on it as an avionics tech uh, simulator. So I still think we can learn a lot online, but I really, really believe that we should be doing hands-on tactile training on an aircraft. So we'll see you next Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. Don't forget to tell everybody you know. Till next time, keep it safe.